Hey guys, welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Every time I look for the ugliest thing in my engine bay, my eye goes right towards the master cylinder. Most stock master cylinders are cast iron versus aluminum because cast iron is cheaper. Cast iron also rusts while aluminum does not. So over time, you end up with what we have here. I'm upgrading the original 13 16 inch master cylinder on my 85 Toyota pickup to a one inch master cylinder from a third gen V6 truck because the front calipers have already been upgraded from that same V6 truck. So before I install this new master cylinder, I'm going to paint it to keep it looking good for years to come. You could clean up your existing part, but it's tough to remove all the rust on most modern master cylinders thanks to the way they're shaped. This would take forever to clean up on a part that would eventually need replaced anyways. This new one only cost me 46 bucks and when it's new is the ideal time to paint it. First I'm going to remove the reservoir because I don't want to paint it and removing it is easier than masking it off and trying to paint around it. I'm using some brake cleaner on a rag to wipe any oil out of the holes for the reservoir so that my tape will stick. An easy way to cover the holes is to roll up a ball of tape and stuff it in. I'm also going to cover the thread of holes for the brake lines. This unit came with these plastic plugs and they work perfect to cover up the threaded holes. I'm going to clean and mask the seal at the base as well. Most new parts have a light oil coating sprayed on to prevent initial corrosion when exposed to moisture. I'm using brake cleaner to remove all of this oil to get a clean surface for the primer. After the surface is dry and all the brake cleaner has evaporated, it's time to apply a light coat of self-etching primer. Self-etching primer is ideal for bare metal. Keep in mind, the mounting surface isn't going to be seen, so that's a good side to set the master cylinder on while painting. After the first light coat is dried, it's time for another light coat. Avoid heavy coats as they just cause runs and take longer to dry. Look all the way around the master cylinder after the second coat to ensure all areas are coated evenly. Touch up any areas you might have missed. Now, after the self-etching primer has dried according to the directions in the can, it's time for paint. Be sure to use an enamel paint, not lacquer. Brake fluid will eat through any paint if left on long enough after a spill. Enamel paint is no exception, but it's still more resistant to chemicals than lacquer paint. Most lacquer paint won't even hold up to gasoline. Caliper paint, engine paint, and most wheel paints should be enamel. Enamel paints usually have a specific time allowed for additional coats compared to lacquers, which can be recoated at any time. So be sure to read the instructions. I'm starting with light coats, focusing on any hard to reach areas first. I like to get these taken care of first since I sometimes get paint on the easy areas while covering the tight areas. The first coat should be light enough to not even completely cover the primer. After the first coat is dried, it's time for another light coat. I was going to paint this silver, but decided to try something different and went with gloss black since all the trim on my truck is black. After the second coat is dried, take a look around to see that the primer is almost covered. If not, lightly spray any thin areas. If so, it's time for the wet coat. This coat is going to be slightly heavier than the others. This helps to fill in any of the light spray texture from the earlier coats, leaving a smooth, uniform finish. I'm starting with the tight areas first to avoid any runs on the easy to reach areas. If you're using gloss paint, the wet coat will really shine. You can also add some coats of clear for extra durability, but I don't think it's necessary on a part like this. After the wet coat is dried, check the directions of your paint to see if there are any extra steps required to fully cure the paint. I let mine sit at room temperature for 24 hours and it was good to go. After the paint is fully cured, it's time to remove the plugs and tape, put the reservoir back on, and admire your work. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison to see how much better this one looks compared to the old rusty one. In next week's video, I'm going to show how to remove the rusty master cylinder, throw some fresh paint on the old brake booster, and install the new master cylinder. So be sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up if you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for watching and I look forward to your comments and questions below.